Ipse leads the way. Ipse. One system personnel and pay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Team Ipse for our podcast series where we discuss what is going on in the program and on our road to go live. I'm Sergeant Major Gary Kress, the Senior Enlisted Advisor of the Functional Management Division. Today, I have two very special guests uh, as a part of the podcast, uh, two uh, two gentlemen who are playing a, a very key role in the things uh, that the program that we're doing to get Ipsay delivered to the field. And so I'm very excited to uh, introduce you all to uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Elko, who is our deployment chief, and Chief Warrant Officer 3, Roscoe Harris, who is a deployment tech here with the team. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. And glad to be here, Sergeant Major. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Sergeant Major. I guess I'll start by saying, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about here today, many folks who, who are turn, tuned in, uh, you know, may have heard a little bit about. Hopefully, they've been dialed into some of the things that you gentlemen have been working on. You know, so let's uh, let, let's talk about uh, what it is that you're doing out there, Chief. Uh, if you kind of lead us in, tell us, um, you know, what we're going to be discussing here today. So right now, we have a major training and employment milestone going on right now, which is called a rehearsal of concept or Rock Three, and we're just training and going through a, a lot of the milestones and a lot of the training that will, will happen during Brownout and Cutover before it goes live, Sergeant Major. Yeah, and I'm sure that, uh, well, I know, uh, but I'm sure that you guys have, uh, you know, been burning the midnight oil and, and you know, drinking plenty of energy drinks or whatever it is that you do to keep going. Because, you know, again, our, you know, I've often told folks when I go out and, and share what it is that we're doing and help get the field ready, you know, there is so much work that this team does with such a small amount of people. So, uh, you know, first and foremost, let me thank you all for doing that. And, um, you know, to get this type of exercise event uh, built, ready, and prepared, get, you know, the field online. You know, when you look at how diverse our force is, you know, uh, all these different formations that already have competing events and things that they have going on, you know, the, the work that you all are doing and are going to share here today is is really is tremendous because, you know, we're talking really division level and up, you know, potentially a few thousand soldiers that are going to be participating. Um, and so it really, really is a big deal here and very key series of events to help get the field ready. So uh, maybe in a little bit more more detail, uh, Colonel Elko, if you could kind of talk us through what it is that uh, you've been working on and sharing with the field. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. So across the team here for Rock Drill 3, it, it's been all hands on deck getting this out to the field. Um, from the technical perspective, the, the Rock Drill is paired with a mock conversion. That's where we exercise that cutover checklist. It's every step and every permutation that that data has to go through uh, to get into IPSE. Um, what we've done from the deployment team is overlay some uh, some functional overviews and some functional training opportunities throughout. Some of them are synced with that technical activity. Uh, most of them are desync, but it's great information that we're trying to give in sequence. Um, so we've got the cutover guide. That's where we are capturing uh, contingency plans for sustaining HR business through brownout and cutover. That's going to be a living document through the end of our rock series. We gave a deep dive overview on that over the last couple of days. Um, and right now we're right in the middle of giving uh, deep dive looks at the accountability processes uh, for brownout and cutover. Um, we've been saying it everywhere. The pay systems are going to be up. The medical benefit systems are going to be up. The accountability systems are going to be severely impacted by brownout and cutover. That's why that's getting so much focus from our team. Um, so those are really just us speaking the slides. Um, but starting next week, we're going to be able to give people looks into the system and some hands-on training um, and some of the key areas that are going to be um, very impactful for their organizations for brownout and cutover. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday next week, we're going to be giving overviews on a couple of processes. And then Thursday and Friday, uh, we're hosting hands-on training in what's called the Crosswalk Staging Table. Um, I know everybody listening has heard enough about one slot, one soldier in IPSE and AOS. Um, Crosswalk Staging Table is a tool in IPSE. It's your last possible opportunity during brownout and cutover to get any unslotted people applied to your vacant slots. Um, so training on this we see is absolutely vital to getting through brownout and cutover and seeing all your folks in IPSE on go live. Um, so we're training in that on the 10th and the 11th. We've got some instructor led sessions, hands on keyboards, teaching folks how to do that work. Um, and then the following Monday and Tuesday, 14 and 15 February, this is critical for the units. 
from 08 to 1600 East Coast time. Uh, that is tied to a system uh, refresh activity on this end. So sorry for your luck if you're in the Pacific or the West Coast. Um, but those times, those eight hour blocks, each one of those days is when that crosswalk staging table is gonna be open uh, for units to go in and take activity in the system to get their slotting to happen as part of Rock Drill 3. Um, also during that, we are proofing out two concepts for how we're going to provide over-the-shoulder support to the field. Um, in particular, with units in the system doing the work in the crosswalk staging table, um, we've got a few sites where we've got instructors on hand who are working with the senior level organization there on that installation, providing that over-the-shoulder support for their subordinate elements. The reason Chief Harris, one of the reasons Chief Harris is there at Fort Knox, we're proofing out a centralized concept where we've asked organizations to provide us their best LNO with a working knowledge of IPSE, um, to be in a room with us and some developer type folks, uh, SMEs in the system to field issues um, as units exercise that slotting activity as part of ROC3. And then we've got some enterprise level stuff that we're doing with our, uh, our partners there at HRC as well. Not to put too too much uh, detail on that, there's an awful lot. Um, we can get the links posted to where everybody listening can find those calendars. Tons of information there, sir. Um, uh, really, quite frankly, where do I start? So let me uh, let me transition just a tad bit here, and, and Chief, I'll, I'll kind of shift this one over to you because, you know, so much of what our warrant officers do, um, you know, for our HR formations, you know, whether it's in the brigade S1, the division, wherever that may be, um, you know, they're such a key part of of the organization, uh, getting organization prepared, you know, uh, briefing our, you know, leaders within those formations. Um, Colonel Elko talked about a few things here, and I just want to make sure because you never know who's listening to this, right? You know, we, we talk so many things here at what I call a high level or at the program, right? But we want to make sure that everybody understands uh, what it is that we're trying to get after and prepare for the field. So, Chief, you know, um, maybe you can talk just a tad bit about, uh, you know, Colonel Elko mentioned the cutover guide. He mentioned over the shoulder support. You know, uh, if you could, maybe just a tiny bit of detail on that to share with the listener what, what that is, or, or maybe you can apply that to maybe that young W01 who's coming out of school and, and um, you know, maybe coming from a job where they weren't necessarily involved in, in normal HR day-to-day -day activities, you know, what are these things, uh, what do they do for them? How does it help them within their formations? That's a great question. Um, so this cutover guide is 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 kind of a manual, it's, a, it's kind of a SOP for us as HR professionals to be able to know what some of the contingency plans we, we're going to have to do um, during this brownout and cutover. Um, for us as 420s, we are very heavily into all of our systems. We, we, you know, we, we are that SME for all of those systems. And it, it's it's going to be hard when you know those systems go down. Um, we we have some you know old warrants, but we have some of these young warrants who um, wasn't in back in the day when we were doing paper paper documents and uh, systems was not as, uh, as 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 great as they were now. They are now, but uh, the systems are going to be down. So this cutover guide is is assisting the field and what are the contingency plans for uh, when the systems go down and what you can do to prepare your uh, your formations. And one of the key things is that we're, we I talked to the 420s about is in creating your own cutover SOP for your organization. Um, because this is an overarching guide that, that's for the entire Army, all three compos. But we know that each organization have different ways of um, how they um, do business every day when it comes to accountability, when it comes to other things. So this is just kind of like a foundation for those units. So we just asking, you know, these 420s and these HR professionals to take a real deep dive into this cutover guide and that can formulate your cutover SOP so you can give your your commanders uh, the, the right tools of what we're gonna do when, when we go through brownout and cutover, Sergeant Major. 
Absolutely. So chief, you know, I, I kind of think, you know, one of the things you said there made me think about, you know, you talked about the younger warrant officers, right? Obviously we have the the new generation coming to the army, right? Us three guys are getting to be a little bit of the old dogs, you know, we're, we're learning some things, but when this is all said and done, you know, we're going to leave this for the generation behind us. And uh, so much of that generation is really technically savvy, right? And part of that in our day-to-day -day use is, is kind of having an, you know, something as simple as a cell phone in your hand, right? And for many of those younger folks, I know my, my sons who are late teens, early 20s, you know, if they don't have their phone for, you know, an hour, they're kind of looking around and getting panicked and not knowing what to do with themselves, right? So when you equate that to an HR professional or an S1 shop or a G1 shop that's not going to have access to their everyday systems that they're so accustomed to using, um, what you're talking about here for them to have a plan, have a guide, have a tool uh, to be able to know what to do, right? Because that's not something that's that's easy to think about. We are so accustomed. You mentioned using those systems. We're so accustomed to uh, being able, hey, let me just log in to help, you know, whoever that is that's coming through their uh, office doors, whether that's the commander, the sergeant major, or just, you know, that soldier who, who needs something done for their uh, for their record or, or their career, right? So having that plan, you know, we talked about the over-the-shoulder support um, really giving the HR community uh, and users uh, the understanding that, hey, you know, we're here to assist. So we go through this period of brownout and cutover, uh, which will be challenging. But as long as we continue to work, share, message uh, and work with the field and the field gives us feedback, we can get through that. Right. So uh, but that support is so important. So once we do uh, flip if say on for lack of better terms and, and the system goes live, you know, there is support there. There is uh, a reach back cell. There's different capabilities um, that the HR community knows will be there. Uh, so very important. And I, I do want to kind of back up for a second. A couple of things that you mentioned, sir, you know, that are very key to this process and what you're doing, right? AOS, the army organization server, you know, and then you mentioned some mock conversion, uh, you know, in relation to data and things that we're doing to prep the system. If you could, sir, just real briefly, um, you know, just talk a little bit about how that lines up with what you're doing, um, you know, maybe concerns that, you know, those may have, who's kind of handling the Army organization server, um, you know, those types of things, just so the user can really relate to what it is that the information is that you're sharing. Yep, absolutely. So the Ar Army organization server is where uh, structured data is being stored currently. Um, it's where IPSA receives its structured data. So what that means for you guys, um, in, in legacy where we used to do all our slotting in EMILPO and you can double slot, and you can excess slot your soldiers, we don't have that capability um, in the Army org server and in IPSA. Um, the risk there for brownout and cutover, if you have unslotted soldiers who make it through brownout and cutover on go live, they're not going to be associated with your unit. You're not going to be able to see them or transact them in IPSA. They're essentially going to be in limbo. Um, and it takes action at the Army level um, to get them tied back to your organization so that you can see them and transact on them. That's why doing your slotting now in AOS is such a big deal. I, I talked a little bit about the crosswalk staging table. That, that's really your final protective fires, right? That, that's a really finite window during cutover that is, we didn't action this in time. This is our last possible opportunity to do it. If you do it in legacy, you're not going to have to worry about it during cutover. Um, and you're going to save yourself a lot of stress during that 48 to 96 hours um, that you could potentially do this during cutover. So th that's really the biggest thing I want to footstop is get your slotting done in AOS. Huge deal. Yeah, great point. Uh, and we certainly uh, want to get folks ahead of the problem, right? Because we have all of this time now. Um, you know, to get our formations ready, to get our units ready, to get our sections ready, wherever that is, whatever piece of the puzzle uh, that the listener may, may be sitting in now, you know, we have this time now that we can really set ourselves up for success. What we don't want to see happen is uh, the field to, you know, maybe not be prepared, you know, once we do go live, those soldiers in our formation, those leaders in our formation, uh, you know, they're they're going to have an expectation uh, of the HR professionals to get things done. And we really don't want to have to take extra time uh, to have to go back and try and solve problems that we really could have got a, ahead of, you know, uh, beforehand. So uh, some great points there. And I, I think one thing that I want to add, maybe going back to what Chief was talking about, um, one of the things that I find myself talking to senior leaders about w when I go out and Chief alluded to is, you know, these these soldiers, these organizations, these HR professionals, um, 
you know, they know what's going on during this time, right? And and brownout and cutovers in such a dynamic time now with the shift, you know, in September, you know, potentially coming off of a PCS season uh, through the summer, you know, the fiscal year coming to the end when you look at a sessions and the different things that are that are typically going on during that part of the year, um, you know, there's a high likelihood that formations, organizations could be in some sort of training exercise. So, so many different things to think about. And while from our level at the Army staff level, we can push guidance and information, it really is important going back to Chief's points that these formations understand their organizations, right? And I think he said, have a plan. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, the user level knows what's going on in their formation. They are the ones that have to advise their leaders to say, these, this is what we need to get done. These are the priorities. Um, this is how we're going to attack during this is this time. This is, uh, you know, who may or may not be able to take leave. And, and so, so many different things to think about uh, when you just really look at all the things that you all are tackling and then just across the board from the program level. So we're talking about many different things, both technical, tactical, um, you know, that we're trying to engage the field with so they have an understanding on. But I think you gentlemen understand that as we are sharing this information with the field, we continue to get information back. Right. And that information coming back, you know, really helps us learn. It helps us sharpen, you know, our tools and helps us get ready. So let me let me transition just a bit and ask either one of you gentlemen, I guess, Colonel Elko, I'll start with you. You know, what are you seeing from your seat? What are we getting back from the field? What is our program learning from the field? Uh, so we have reached out down to the division level, some of the separate brigades, uh, some of those direct reporting units um, to solicit participation in Rock Drill 3, right? We've got two divisions right off the bat, 3rd ID and 101st, um, plus ATSC and the Corps of Engineers um, who raised their hands and volunteered to exercise their offline uh, accountability SOPs as part of Rock Drill 3. Um, so over the next two weeks, on alternating weeks, uh, two each of those organizations are either going to restrict or simulate restricting access to EMILPO um, and, and put themselves through the paces of how do we do accountability offline? Is our SOP up to standard? Is it going to sustain us through brownout and cutover? And we're asking them for feedback um, as to what they discovered that they didn't anticipate. Uh, what I was surprised to find when we started doing outreach was just how many units had already done something similar. Um, units that we hadn't engaged directly with um, told us, yes, we've got our SOPs up and in place. We're tracking with the cutover guide um, and we've run drills similar to what we're doing targeted here with those four organizations. Um, so th that's a good deal of the feedback that we're getting back. I know that there is a ton and I can't stress it enough of anxiety uh, about the slotting issue that I just mentioned. Um, that, that's what folks are fix, uh, fixated on getting burned down now. And it's really a culture shift. You know, we're, we're blurring the lines between force management and strength management. Force managers usually look at that document and it stays the same for three to five years. They're not used to having to be involved in the process of building extra slots so that those strength managers can slot their excess folks. Um, so getting those folks to talk and getting that slotting action to happen, I, I think it's been the biggest challenge. Um, and, and the biggest feedback that we've received back has been um, related there. Oh, that's great. And, and Chief, let me ask you this, you know, through these touch points, especially these last couple of weeks, uh, all the things that you've been doing with the field. And, and obviously, as we mentioned, you're already out of Fort Knox kind of paving the way for uh, the events that are going to be coming over the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, do you have anything that you've seen or, or maybe that you've gotten from the field that you said, hey, look, um, maybe that's something we need to think about or, you know, has the feedback from the field been helpful in your development of, say, the cutover guide or different things that you're you're doing to prepare for this rock drill? Oh, yes. Our major, that's, we, we have every every time we have a working group, you know, it's, it's something that uh, we we find from the field and the field, you know, brings the light to us. And myself and Colonel Elko, we, we joke all the time and because, you know, what keeps us us up at night is is knowing that that one thing that we have not thought about um, before IPSA goes live. So these rock drills not only helps the field, but it also helps us for the as the program. Um, we just had a we just had a working group, a, a dig, um, a deployment integration group meeting um, right before um, this podcast, and it was some things that. Uh, 
some texts had in, in Korea brought to light about d -Rose. So we need to look into um, how, the, how, is, how this new system is going to affect d -Rose. So anytime we have a working group, it's, it's a lot of things that come up and come out in those working groups. And it makes us pause and say, hey, maybe we need, take, need to take another look at that because it's, it's nothing that um, we want to put to the wayside and say, oh, this is not going to be nothing. We want to deep dive everything because we, we don't want anything to to fall to the wayside when Ipsy goes live. Yeah, it's some uh, really remarkable when you sit back and think and I watch you too. And, and again, the program as a whole from my seat, the reach, uh, the influence and the work that you're doing to get to the far stretches of the earth, quite frankly, and the army uh, really is remarkable. So to get that reach out there, to get people that are buying in, uh, dialing into these different sessions, like you mentioned, the deployment integration uh, group. Uh, is, is so key so we can get that information we can learn as a program and we can share what it is that they need to do so so as we get through the closure of this podcast and we start to look forward into the things that uh, the field can do right because we've given a lot of information here in a short amount of time uh, to let them know what it is that we are going to be doing um, you know one thing that we continue to want to stress to the hr professionals is this um, we really need you if you haven't done so already to do your r3 hr pro distance learning training you know, we are seeing numbers that are trending in the right direction, more HR professionals that are completing that training, um, but we're still a bit lower than where we really want to be, you know, and, and um, we're getting to a, a very critical stage here. And, you know, we often say that this is our weapon system. I think that's a very accurate analogy, right? We need to be uh, trained and proficient in our weapon system because again, once we flip the switch, and we go live, our, our soldiers, leaders and formations, uh, they're not gonna have an appetite to hear, I don't know. So now is the time to get that training, right? So we can get proficient on our weapon system and not only get proficient on our weapon system, we need access to our weapon system, right? So we have to get this training done. So just another plug for those listening, uh, if you've done your training, great, but I need you to look left and look right. And if there's any non-commissioned officers here listening, hey, listen, I'm leaning on you. Uh, I need you. The program needs you. Your formations need you. Please, please, please get engaged. Make sure your soldiers are trained and proficient uh, because it is going to be vital that we do that. So some key dates, uh, 31 March, your HR professional distance learning training needs to be complete. Uh, by 31 May, we need all to be done with their instructor facilitated training. So that's your hands on training. I think most formations are looking somewhere around 16 hours or so for that. So, uh, again, distance learning is separate from your instructor facilitated, your in-person and hands-on training. And then I'm going to highlight a few other training opportunities here uh, that hopefully those listening will be able to take advantage of. So we have our Army Organization Server. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Elko talked a lot about that. We have that training each Thursday. Uh, we have a webinar series that's the first and third Wednesday. Uh, we have audit training that's on the fourth Monday, and then we have roles and permission trainings that is on the fourth Tuesday. Uh, so you can keep up with these schedules. Uh, this long range training calendar is posted on our S1 net mill suite page. These training uh, sessions can be accessed, you know, via Microsoft Teams or recordings can be watched, you know, if you access through S1 net. Uh, so there really is no excuse uh, to not get out find information, get smart, get ready. Don't just sit back. If you have been one of the ones that were leaning forward and getting your training done, that's great. But there's plenty of other sessions and things going on out there that you can get smart on. So if you don't know a lot about Army Organization Server and you understand the importance of, uh, you know, slotting and how that's going to affect your formation, you know, you need to get smarter on it. Dial into one of those trainings, see what it is. Go find that long range training calendar. Uh, check our website again, check S1 net, check our social media and you can get updates as to when those trainings are. And then finally, I won't highlight all of them because there's just so many, but you know, once you uh, uh, get into IPSA and you see the environment there, there are so many different subcategory trainings that are very important, um, you know, for the roles that HR professionals are going to play. So uh, whether that's, you know, your HR supervisor, your validator, payroll data user, on and off boarding promotions, really it is endless. So please, if you are not familiar with these 
training opportunities, get to one of uh, the places that I just mentioned to, to see the training calendar, log into IPSA, see what you can uh, enroll yourself in so you can go ahead and get smart. And having said that, I think we're at a good point to close here. Gentlemen, I do want to thank you so much. I know you are incredibly busy, especially this week, next week with all the things that are going on. I uh, do want to thank you uh, for being here. And I will pause here. Colonel Elko, I'll turn it over to you for any parting shots that you want to give uh, the listener here today. Sure thing. So as you've probably heard all throughout this, uh, this is a marathon that we're running. This is definitely not a sprint. And in that spirit, uh, we established a leaderboard tag there on Peloton. If you want to come ride along and just blow off some steam with us, look for hashtag IPSA, no dashes. It's just hashtag IPPSA. Come join us. If I could just take a second, I, I wanted to impart my rule of thumb for preparing yourself and your unit for brownout and cutover. If it's a product you receive from a legacy system, so your accountability rosters, your purse tempos, your record briefs, your promotion point worksheets, pull them early, keep an offline copy for use during brownout and cutover. If it's work you do in a legacy system, like maintaining all of that stuff that I just referenced, updating your DD-93s, doing your PRRs, um, do the work early, maintain an offline copy. So, in fact, just prior to brownout and cutover, uh, Emilpo is going to push a record brief to every active soldier's AMHRR there in IPERM. So unit S1s will have access to soldier data, even though we're in brownout and cutover. Um, if we rush the gates of IPERMs, try and download everybody's information, there's potential we could overtax the system and lose that resource. Um, but like I said, if it's work that you do in legacy, if it's a product that you need from legacy, do it early. Keep offline copy. Thanks, you guys. Great tips there, sir. And over to you, Chief. Anything from your seat that you can uh, give us some parting shots on? So, Major, I would just say that we, uh, all of us as HR professionals, we in this, we in this fight together. Um, this is our system. Um, on day one, when the system go live, I know our commanders is going to look to us to be that SME to the system. So we need to get that training done. We need to, we need to start deep diving and 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 reading and, and, and getting involved in, in all the things that's going on IPSA because this is our system and we need to make sure it's, it's going to be the best system it can be. That's all I have, Sergeant Major. I could not have said it any better, Chief and gentlemen. Once again, thank you so much. And, and to the listeners out there, thank you for joining us. If you do have any questions uh, regarding any of the things that you heard today, please feel free to send us an email. You can find our email address down in the description. Uh, you can reach out to us through uh, many different ways on social media again. Uh, please do not hesitate. We are here as a resource for you. And until next time, one soldier, one record, one army. Motivated soldier, right job, right on time. 24-7, 365.